So I got a bit ahead of myself with the uh, progress and experimentation on this tender for the 5022. So I wanted to take some time and go over the uh, the tender for the 5022 here and kind of review the things I found and uh, show you some of the things I'm uh, getting ready to do. So I had watched laid off six video on this engine. So I knew a little bit about what was going on in this tender. Um, it's very interesting the way it's laid out. Uh, Slightly different from some other third rail stuff I have, just um, in the sense of it, it uses some unique Lionel OEM parts. And uh, other than that, though, some of the other aspects are very, very similar to uh, what third rail does with their, their tenders for uh, TMCC engines. Um, as you notice, this one doesn't have a third pickup roller um, on the tender. Uh, one frustrating thing about third rail tenders is there's no power pickup at all on some of them uh, during this era. Uh, the way the antenna is laid out on this, and I'll get into it here in a bit, um, the, uh, the, the wheels are completely isolated. In fact, they're like double insulated from the frame and the tender shell and all that stuff, you know, for the, for the uh, antenna. Um, but there's no provisions for picking up ground from the, from the uh, tender. So if I want to Put some auxiliary ground pickups on here I'll, I'll have to fashion something but I'm gonna try to get away with just doing a, a pickup roller um, I think I'm gonna get enough of a ground pickup off the engine so anyway we'll get into this uh, in a little more detail so one thing that's kind of a giveaway for this tender being a little unique is this Hall effect sensor um, it's a magnetic sensor as you can see there's little shaving stuck to it here. But this is an actual like Lionel OEM part, even silt screened with their part number on there. And uh, five volts is provided to this little pickup board here. And then a pulse is um, magnetically coupled from this, this uh, magnet wheel back to the uh, rail sounds board to, to uh, affect the chuff. So my suspicion is that there's two magnetic puffs per uh, revolution of this wheel set giving us um, pretty close to four chuffs per rev at the driver. So, you know, the old cheesy trick with this stuff um, was to use a tender wheel um, that's pretty close to half the size of, uh, half the diameter of the drivers. And uh, if you pick up two pulses on on uh, something, you know, half the size of the drivers, you'll get pretty close to four. And I do this a lot with my upgrades. It's so easy and reliable. Um, when Lionel made their electronics, you know, some of the early uh, TMCC boards, even back in the LCRU days, they, they took either a Hall Effect or a uh, um, kind of a cherry switch input, and uh, their boards could deal with sort of a funny uh, duty cycle. It wasn't necessarily a pulse. It was just detection of, of on-off. So that's why you see people when they do TMCC upgrades, sometimes they'll just they'll get away with putting a couple of magnets on a, tender, a set of tender wheels and the math resolves itself. So you can see there's a battery hatch here. I'm not gonna use the battery, I already took it out. You don't need it for a uh, command environment. All it's really doing is keeping the, uh, the rail sounds alive uh, over um, uh, power interruptions and then you get like kind of a passive automatic uh, set of shutdown sounds when you remove power from the track. So it's not really needed for any command functions or any other operating functions in the uh, TMCC command environment. So. so let's look at the way they set up the TMCC antenna on this uh, on this tender for the 5022. Um, as you can see, this is just our antenna connection to the uh, to the shell of the tender. And if you notice the frame, I mean we're just pretty much brass on brass here. There's so there's there's a clue that the, the tender shell and at least this this whole frame. Is, is being used as the antenna. Now, when we flip it over, that's where it gets interesting. You'll start to notice there's uh, little like nylon bushings on the, on the truck mounts. And also these wheels are insulated on the axles. And like I said, that's a little frustrating if you're in need of better ground pickup, you'll have to come up with something um, to, uh, to get uh, ground off these treads. But it's the kind of way that third rail has done a lot of their tenders. Um, importantly, uh, they've also isolated this, um, this mount for the uh, drawbar. 
and uh, that way, you know, you're not grounding out the antenna when you couple this up to the engine. So when you're doing um, uh, like KD modifications and stuff, it's very important that you take into account that, you know, if you're using a metal KD and you, you attach that box to the frame and then you couple up to a train, there's, there, there could be a chance of you grounding out the uh, TMCC signal and just confusing the engine or, or making it instantly think it's in conventional mode and it'll take off like a rocket. But that's kind of how they did the antenna on here. I also noticed there was some kind of auxiliary wire run along here. I, I don't know what the deal is with that, but this does get a real good signal. I'm not going to modify it in any way. There's, there's no need to. So we'll get into the uh, very unique OEM Lionel motherboard on here, uh, here in a second. So we'll take a look at this rather unique hardware in this tender and uh, just want to talk a little bit about the, um, the electronics from this era. Um, in the early 2000s, Lionel had licensed their TMCC uh, technology and hardware to um, a select group of manufacturers, and that was K-Line, Atlas, Weaver, and Third Rail. And basically what you got was you got some combination of Lionel OEM hardware. Um, the only thing you didn't really get at the time was when Lionel introduced their Odyssey speed control, um, their cruise control. You know, that wasn't really offered to the competitors. And you typically ended up with generic sounds. I don't believe Lionel ever encoded custom sounds for any of the competitors. So this would have been real typical of the time, this, this setup here. So I'll take a closer look here at this uh, TMCC hardware of the early 2000s and just talk a little bit about how Lionel set some stuff up. Um, please excuse this connection here. This is already um, for my uh, cruise control solution. Um, like I said, I'm a little bit out of order on my video progress. But anyway, Lionel generally would um, use this modular Rail Sounds 4 era hardware on different types of motherboards depending on, on the setup. Uh, in their factory stuff, they typically have a motherboard in the engine that hosted um, the R2LC receiver and a motor driver in the engine. And then in the tender, they would just have a motherboard that would host um, the sound stuff, you know. And this is rather unique because everything is inside the tender. And this motherboard is hosting a combination of hardware I've never seen before. Um, so... As you can see, we've got three main daughter boards on here, and this is uh, it consists of the R2LC, which is their their radio receiver demodulator um, decoder board, and you've got some Rail Sounds components. So this is uh, they have a Rail Sounds power supply, which is also an audio amp, and um, the actual Rail Sounds ROM chip that stores the uh, you know the specific Rail Sounds. Um, sounds that they have recorded and encoded and uh, you know they've got all the header pins for all the hardware you know the speaker couplers lights that sort of stuff right off the motherboard and like I said this motherboard is kind of cool I've never seen one like this before with the embedded um, or, or the integrated uh, sound uh, volume pot and uh, run program switch and all that sort of stuff and I'll show you underneath the uh, nice brass plate they put under there and Typical of Lionel, you know, their, their motor drivers were always on a separate board. And this was their uh, DCDR, which was very common back in the early 2000s. It's an open loop uh, DC motor driver. It takes uh, pulse width modulated signals from the R2LC, couple through these optos, and then it drives these uh, 8 amp triax in an H bridge configuration. So you can see there's um, motor connections going out through our simple four wire tether. We got some power coming in. And in this setup, to get better cruise control, I believe I'm just gonna replace this DCDR with an electric railroad cruise M. So real, real simple solution. So you can see the uh, bottom of this motherboard, which I've never seen used anywhere else. And uh, you can see the nice brass plate that third rail made. And it's, it's kind of a shame it's it's mostly obscured by the front truck. And, and there's kind of an access port through the truck to uh, get at the volume pot. But um, I just 
I think what I'm gonna do, well, I've already made the choice, and like I said, I kind of screwed up the uh, sequence of videos here. Um, I ended up deciding I really wanted to keep these uh, Lionel Electronics because the packaging was so nice. And as you see, the tender's in really good shape. You know, nobody's ever tried to do any um, upgrades to it. So um, I want to do as little as possible to it other than give it, you know, good motor control and, and maybe some better sounds. So here's a quick look at some of the upgrade hardware I was considering for this project. They're all made by uh, Electric Railroad. Um, this is a sound commander that uh, I took out of a third rail L1S. This is the full cruise commander um, that gives you everything but sound. So you'd have to use it in combination with, with this uh, sound commander to kind of replace all this nice OEM hardware here. And as you can see, it uses a standard Lionel R2LC or R4LC on this uh, motherboard with an integrated motor driver. And then you've got some nice terminal blocks here to make all your power and accessory connections to it. But um, I decided I really wanted to keep this Lionel hardware intact. So I just, I, I'm, I'm going to go with the Cruise M modular. And uh, this is just a replacement for the Lionel DCDR. And as uh, you can see, pretty similar format. Okay, so here's a quick rundown of motor drive technology over the years for Lionel's Rail Sounds 4 modular TMCC stuff. Um, on the left is the DCDR that I'm taking out, and, and this is just an open loop DC motor driver that works with the uh, PWM signal from the R2LC. And you can see um, all of these are kind of similar in footprint and componentry. You know, they all have big bridge rectifiers, and uh, they all have to, you know, fit in this you know heat sink contraption Lionel likes to use um, of course this provided no kind of cruise feature at all and um, Lionel kind of uh, came up with their own cruise system um, in the early 2000s called Odyssey and this was their DC DRS this supported uh, feedback from a multi-pole Hall effect sensor they would put on a uh, on a flywheel of a motor and that would that would give you um, cruise control and uh, later versions of this supported um, uh, cruise on off so you could disengage cruise in command mode and um, you know it's desirable if you're doing uh, you know multiple unit um, lash ups and things like that and then moving on one of the first big improvements for Lionel Cruise Control came from Train America Studios in aftermarket form and this was their uh, EOB engineer on board um, uh, modular version and uh, this used their um, optical feedback sensor and uh, it was kind of tunable and you could have different uh, cruise modes. Um, you had 128 step, uh, 32 step, and then you had cruise off. And uh, cruise off, I think, used the PWM um, and it was you know, just 32 voltage steps based on pulse width modulation. And then here's kind of the modern standard. This is kind of what we're left with now. This is the Electric Railroad Cruise M, and this probably came out in like 2008, 2009, and this is kind of uh, what everybody uses now if you want to maintain uh, Lionel OEM parts, um, and this gives you the opportunity to run 100 speed steps, 32 speed steps cruise on, and then a cruise off mode, so um, very close to what the old uh, Train America EOB offered. Um, the big advantage to this is it's using counter EMF for motor feedback to give you cruise control so you don't need a sensor and it, it works very well. You know, it's been around for years. It's kind of like the de facto standard and uh, you can buy these direct from Third Rail now. I think I pick my stuff up now from Roy's Trains up in Traverse City, Michigan. So that's the... Uh, basic uh, motor driver technology of the past 20 something years here. I just wanted to make a couple notes on this um, Cruise M installation. So um, much like the DCDR, you got to provide AC track power to it. It's got the motor leads heading out and um, it still uses the PWM from the uh, R2LC, but you also need to provide uh, the serial com off the uh, R2LC. And that's done here on pin 24. 
you can see I, I soldered it down there. So the other note on these um, Cruise M's, um, you may want to double check your uh, power, uh, track power input to it um, and, and verify. If you just disconnect this from the stock DCDR and try to plug it into the Cruise M, it won't work. It'll just, uh, it'll run at uh, zero miles an hour or a hundred um, when you advance the throttle in command mode. So yeah, be sure that you get the phasing of the track power correct. And uh, there's a nice pinout and diagram in the, uh, in the manual for you to look at. So uh, very important to do that. And, and that's it. There's a uh, nice pinout. It's been on the internet for years for the R2LC that kind of explains all the uh, I.O. for it. So um, pretty easy to find just with a Google search. So I got the Cruise M installed, so uh, why not give it a little bench test here, um, see how it does. First speed step. bad. Chops are pretty close. I got it here on the lab. I think it looks pretty good. Um, nice and smooth. I still got to get that uh, third pickup roller on the tender and got to make some decisions about the sound. But I think it's running pretty nicely right now.
It's not quite four chuffs with the uh, ratio of the tender wheel diameter to the driver diameter. I think I'm getting like 3.76 chuffs per rev, but honestly, I'm happy with about three and a half and above. Uh, I think it's close enough. Um, you know, at speed, it's, it's kind of hard to, to tell with the blur of the motion, but this is good enough for what it is. I think this engine's running really nice. And uh, hopefully I can come up with some sound improvements.